I'm so honored and so delighted to be sitting here with one of my greatest friends, Ludwig Max Fischer. It's very difficult to describe Max, and I'm not going to attempt to do so because you're going to experience him. But why we're having this conversation is because Max has just published a very, very important book called Seasons of the Soul, The Poetic Guidance and Spiritual Wisdom of Hermann Hesse. And it's been one of my dreams for a long time to get Max in a room and to speak to him about Hermann Hesse and the great and sacred themes that are evoked by his poetry. And here we are, sitting in his house in Toronto. Max, I thought that as we enter this radiant labyrinth of Hesse's poetry, that we'd begin really by reading a favorite poem of each of ours. So please. I'm glad you asked. Uh, to start with a poem, because uh, most of the time we talk about poems before we actually focus on the poems themselves. So my favorite, or one of my favorite, is called Pruned Oak. Mm. And uh, this is how it goes. Pruned Oak. O oak tree, how they have pruned you. Now you stand odd and strangely shaped you were hacked a hundred times until you had nothing left but spite and will. I am like you. So many insults and humiliations could not shatter my link with life. And every day I raise my head beyond countless insults towards new light. What in me was once gentle, sweet, and tender this world has ridiculed to death. But my true self cannot be murdered. I am at peace and reconciled. I grow new leaves with patience from branches hacked a hundred times. In spite of all the pain and sorrow, I'm still in love with this mad, mad world. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it, Andrew? This world certainly qualifies as mad, and it's getting madder, and our conversation is going to unfold in the full presence of the world going crazy and falling apart. But I wanted to read a poem that gives me great peace in all the madness, a poem that really convinces me that even in this madness, or perhaps especially in this madness, we're being nourished and protected and held by the great love of the divine. And the poem I chose was Contemplation. The spirit is divine and eternal. Our paths lead toward it. We are its mirror and instrument. Our innermost passion is to become spirit, to shine in its light. But we are made of earth and we are mortal, feel heavy and carry the burden of creatures. Mother Nature nourishes us and nurtures us, nurses us. us uh, Mother Nature nurtures and nourishes us, nurses us along from cradle to the grave, and yet she cannot give us peace. The mythic mother is ruptured by the eternal spark of the spirit. The heavenly father turns the child into man, leaves innocence behind, and summons us to conflict and conscience. Torn between mother and father, torn between body and spirit, we, the most fragile child of creation, hesitate. We who are able to endure in our souls suffering like no other being, we who are capable of the most noble achievement, Love fueled and filled by faith and hope. 
The path is thorny, sin and death its food. We often stray into darkness and feel it had been better never to be born, but our yearning always calls us towards our ultimate calling, to light and spirit, and we do feel it deeply. God loves this fragile creature with a unique, tender blaze of affection. Therefore, love is ever-present and possible when we brothers get confused in conflict. We know neither condemnation nor hatred will bring us closer to our most sacred goal, but only patient love and loving patience. I love those lines, God loves this fragile creature with a unique, tender blaze of affection. Max, what made you devote so many years and such deep, deep heart time to the translation of Hesse's poetry? What sustained you in your search for the way to convey these extraordinary poems in English? Well, Hesse didn't actually come to me very early in my life, in my rebellious phase. Actually, Hesse came to someone who was born and grew up in Germany via America. <laughs> it was when I was hitchhiking across Europe where uh, it was the Americans that were also hitchhiking and wanted to explore Europe. They had uh, Hess in their <laughs> backpack. Hess. And they would always ask, have you read Hess? Siddhartha, have you read The Glassbeat Game? Have you read Demian? Have you read Narcissus and Goldman? Uh, have you read Steppenwolf, right? <laughs> I mean, even the rock band called themselves after Steppenwolf. So uh, it was sort of obligatory, while I actually at the time was into the beat generation, you know, and read Jack Kerouac on the road while I was sticking my thumb out and hoping that a car would stop. Was this the time you were a member of a rock band? Uh, that's when I was a <laughs> bass player. And, you know, and our culture at that time in Germany, we were very much uh, looking towards America. And you know, I grew up with Bob Dylan and uh, or British bands. That's where our, our orientation was. And our whole German heritage was sort of something you know, that we hoped to forget. And uh, so Hess was something that, you know, it, was, it, it wasn't quite up there, really, actually, for us. So, but it was not until in my, my 40s, actually, when I was offered an opportunity to teach a seminar on the glass bead game for a whole semester. And uh, I uh, found in the glass bead game a poem mm. called The Glass Bead yes. Game, which is actually in this volume. Yes. And I thought, this is a real good poem, you know? So I looked up, did Hesse write poetry too? And all the people that talk to me now about Hesse and the season of the soul, they always say the same thing. I didn't know that Hesse wrote poetry. How come I missed that? And so I went to the, you know, the edition of all the works of Hesse in German, and there were over a thousand poems. And uh, I thought, well, they all have been translated for sure. So I did my research, and uh, I found one very small little volume, bilingual, by a great American poet, really the poet's poet, and there are festivals for him. And I mean, everybody who knows anybody who knows anything about poetry knows James Wright. But it was it was just, you know, I think it was twenty two poems. Mm. And a bilingual edition, so it was less than, you know, just really. It was, and it was uh, published in 1970. And I thought, nothing ever since. I thought, well, maybe if nobody has done it, it definitely needs to be done. How about if I do it? So then I got myself into it, but it took some while, actually. It was like they didn't want to be, they didn't want to have, they did want to have their own long incubation time. So I did a first version, a second version, then I put it aside. Then being an academic, I had some professorial obligations where I had to do some publications with lots of footnotes. And, uh, but it came back and it came back, it came back to me. 
again and again. And for some reason, because often in life we get signs. Yes. And actually, years after, I really got deeply into translation. And I was thinking, you know, this really should be really broad to the English-speaking audience. Um, I noticed that I had for years a big poster of Hesse in my office. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so and somehow... you've never seen it. You've never really <laughs> taken it in. In a sort of a discreet way, actually. Yes. I think he was just looking at me and saying, Come I on, Max. Eventually he's going to get it, you know. And it was with a wonderful inscription, which I did understand and used quite often in my life. It was that the three uh, qualities, or maybe the three virtues in a way that you need to have in order to succeed against the infamous of life. And they are courage, willfulness, and, as you just mentioned, Patience, you know, and uh, courage gives you strength. Willfulness, he says, is fun. I love that. Yes. And uh, and patience gives you tranquility. Yes. 